Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School. Here we are, November 22nd. What is this, 2020? Thank God for God bringing us all through this year, all through all the months of Corona. We're yet saved and encouraged. I, I am, I hope you are. And I appreciate the opportunity to stand before the saints of God, our visitors and friends, once again for the glory of God. And we're wrapping up another quarter. Look at that, time is moving. And today, we're here to talk about true riches. We're almost at the end of this study in 1 Timothy. We're on lesson 12, and as it is our custom, we want to acknowledge the Lord in prayer, ask God to be in our, our uh, assembly today. We're not physically together, but when we're together in the spirit, God can work in our midst for the glory of God. So why don't we acknowledge the Lord in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, you're so faithful to your people, oh God. You've allowed us to wake up one more time. You've given us a reasonable portion of our health and strength, Lord God. You've given us our right minds, oh God, joy in our souls, Lord God. You've watched over our houses and our loved ones all through the night, Lord God. We're not in ICU on a respirator, Lord God. We give you the glory and the honor and praise, oh God. It's nothing but the goodness of God in the land of the living, Father God. Lord, we pray for those who are afflicted in various tests and trials. But Lord, we come to worship you and to learn about you. Bless our class, Lord God, yes. the many needs represented among us. You know all about it. Yes. And by your grace, we won't cease to praise thee. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm excited. All my stuff is working. I got my little slides showing. And I think I fixed the little glitch I was having for a little while by the help of the good Lord. So I'm excited to see what God has for us today as we study true riches. Last week we studied false riches, but this week we're studying true riches for the glory of God. So let's go a little bit further and see what's on the agenda for today. So, as it is our custom, we're reviewing the memory verse, right? We're reviewing the memory verse. So today, it's a fill-in-the-blank, fill-in-the-blank periscope. And we're going to read this. Sister Carenza is going to read it for us. And while you are working, we'll be reading. Thank you, Sister Carenza. Yes, ma'am. Charge them that are rich in this world. Yes. That they be not high-minded. Yes. Nor trust in blank. Mm. But in the living God, yes. who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Okay. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Amen. I see. I see Sister Carol came in with one, but then Brother Fredell was the one that got the whole thing. We're not to trust in uncertain riches. Uncertain riches. Very good, Sister Rosemary, Brother Mario, Sister Tiara, Brother Malcolm. You all got it. Excellent. Don't trust in uncertain riches. So much can be said there, but I want to go a little bit farther. Because there's a word in here. Charge. Charge them. Is there a benefit to those who are charged with this duty? It says, charge them that are rich. Periscope, your question is, is there a benefit to those who are charged with this duty when they do that? Oh, I want to get you thinking. I want to get you kind of digging into the meat of the matter, really from the start. Mm -hmm. Is there a benefit when you charge them who are rich in this world that they be not high-minded? Oh, Brother Mario says, yes, there's a benefit to it. Anybody have an idea of what the benefit is? That's right. What is the benefit of not being high-minded? You know what I like to do sometimes when I look at a question? What's the negative of being high-minded? Mm -hmm. What's the negative side? Well, I know one thing. When you've got people who are high-minded, you can't hardly tell them anything. Because in their mind, they're... They're already elevated. Oh, I already know. Yep. I, oh, oh you, there's nothing you can tell me. There's a benefit when you're used to trusting in riches for you to realize, look, riches are uncertain. 
They're uncertain, but there is something that is certain that I could and should trust in more than these riches. And that something is God. Amen. Yeah. It avoids, it rides of Mario. It teaches humility. It avoids arrogance. It keeps you from temptation, brother judge, very good. Yes, that's the benefit. It eliminates pride, brother Malcolm. Yes, very good. Then that's why we have to do as the scripture says. First, we have to charge ourselves not to be focused on the wrong riches in life, but to be focused on those things that are right. Oh, Sister Janae wrote, they are not teachable and lean to their own understanding. That is the problem when you are high-minded. Right. Very good. Very good. You all address that challenge very well. So there's still more to come by the grace of God. All right, so let's look at quickly what is uncertain about riches. So we have what I call a scripture match. We're going to, we meaning you, going to look at each one of these scriptures, A, B, and C, and you tell me which number it goes to. Where is it found in the Bible? And I'll tell you two of these we talked about last week, so it's kind of like a review of what we did last week. And one of these, you're just going to have to use the process of elimination. All right, Sister Carenza, would you be so kind as read A for us, and we'll see what, what our saints and friends on Periscope can get for that answer. Sure. A, surely every man walketh in a vain show. Wow. Surely they are disquieted. In vain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. Oh, that's definitely an uncertainty with, with riches. You doing, you working hard, using all your strategies and discipline and all of that, and then you leave and you don't know what they're going to do. Yep. That's definitely an uncertain thing about riches. So for number one, let's see, what do we have? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I see. I think it's Brother Terrence, A1. I'm sure he's not talking about steak sauce. All right, he's saying A1. Let's see, Sister Tiara, she says A is number three. Oh, we got a little bit of everything. <laughs> Sister Rose says A is number two. Mm. Oh, I'm shaking it up. Sister Helen, I see you. She's like A1, she's with the steak sauce. Let's see what the truth is. All right, Sister uh -oh. Tiara, yes, I think you have it, yes, very good. This is found in Psalms 39, verse 6, exactly, very good. Keep your eyes and ears open. It should get a little bit easier now, all right? <laughs> Sister Carenza, how about number B, what's that? He has swallowed down riches, oh. and he shall vomit, vomit them up again. God shall cast them out of his belly. Oh my goodness, that doesn't sound too good. You, you're just trying to just overdo it, be gluttonous about certain things. And it says here, God shall cast them out of his belly. Isn't that something? It's like running and running to catch something, you never catch it. You see dogs going in circles trying to catch their own tail. And it's like they get all this gusto up just to make this big surge, you know, to get that tail in there. And as soon as they serve, the tail jumps further away. Cast, searching after riches and satisfaction in riches is just like this. So we got answers coming in. We got a lot of people saying, uh, Sister Carol saying B is number two. Sister Tanya, T, T, T. Very good. Sister Vicki, I see a lot of twos. The rest of you all, oh, Sister Dale. And Sister Henderson, very good. Let's see if they're right. I would hate to call your names like that and it's not right, right? Oh, but you're right, right on the money. Excellent, excellent. One last one, C. Could you read that, sis? Yes, ma'am. The sleep of a laboring man is sweet. Oh, wow, is that? Whether he eat little or much. I don't know about that little part. I don't know if God gotta give me a little bit more faith on that. Go ahead. But the abundance of the rich yeah. will not suffer him to sleep. That's something they don't show you in social media. You know, how their abundance and their concern about who's out to get them or who's out to top them. They don't show you that 
the agony, how they, they labor to stay on top. I want to stay in the media focus and keep up that image. So what do you think for C? A lot of people are saying, don't get this wrong. No, no. <laughs> you know, right? This should be the easiest one. And you're right. Those of you who have used uh, number one, Ecclesiastes 5 and 12. Yes, number one goes with C. All right. Yeah, I see you, Sister Sylvia. All right. <laughs> very good, very good, Periscope viewers, saints, and friends. A little bit more. The Bethes touched on the uncertainty about riches. And, you know, I think it's good for us to recall that because when we understand that these natural riches are very uncertain, it will help us to appreciate the true riches that we have in Christ Jesus. A little bit farther, a little bit further. I got a couple of pictures here, but we're going to read just two verses in Matthew, the 19th chapter, and we're going to read verse 23 and 24. Sister Karenza, if you would do the honors for me, please. Yes, ma'am. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Yes. Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom mm. of heaven. And again, I say. Now, he didn't say it was impossible, but he said it was hardly. It was an event that rarely happens that somebody who's really rich can enter into the kingdom of heaven. All right? Go ahead. Verse 24. And again, I say unto you. Say it, it is, again. It is easier for oh. a camel to go through the eye of a needle okay. than for a rich man. Oh, to wow. enter into the kingdom of God. So what, what, what is Jesus trying to convey to us? So a lot of this is contextual. You kind of have to understand what he's referring to. Some people, when you look at different scholars, they, they say he's talking metaphorically. Metaphorically saying, how, how could you get this camel that's so big and so massive through an entranceway that's very small and narrow. We know that the kingdom of God, it's, it's a straight way, it's a narrow way, it's a tight way. But if you got too much, it can hinder you from going in when you value what you have too much. So a lot of people, a lot of scholars, they, they kind of assume that he's talking metaphorically here. And some say this, they would say that in those times when, you know, the cities had walls around there, them, and they had an entranceway to the city, but the city's entranceway was very narrow. It looked like an opening like this. Why would they have a narrow entranceway? Isn't it easier to guard a narrow entranceway than it is a huge one, blocks and blocks long? It's not really protection. So they had a very narrow entranceway and the merchants would come from different places to sell their wares and goods, and they would pack them on camels. You might not even be able to see the whole camel in here because there's so many things on his back. Look at that. Well, when the camel was packed so heavy, you can barely, I, I stare at it, and here's his little face. You can't even recognize it for all of this stuff. Well, there are a lot of people going through life carrying a lot of burdens. They, maybe they're invested in their reputation and their status and the car they have and their looks. And they're carrying all of this. But to get into the kingdom of God, you have to let all of that go because yeah. it won't fit. So what is he saying? They knew very well in order to get a loaded camel through the eye of the needle, yeah. historically they called that opening the eye of a needle, that camel was going to have to do one or two things. Either you were going to get that camel to get down on his knees mm. and crawl in through the eye of the needle, or you're going to have to take some of that off. Yep. <laughs> you were going to have to take some of that off. Right. And so this was something they knew very intimately because they witnessed it in their midst time and time again. There are some camels that don't want to bow. Right. They don't want to humble themselves. You can be saved and have wealth, 
but you're going to have to humble yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to have to really get down low in your mind mm -hmm. to accept the meek and lowliness that's in salvation and not think you're any better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who they can't do it, and you know what God just does? He just strips them of some of their stuff. <laughs> and then you know what? After they lose everything, now they come into God. Now they're like, okay, I have nothing keeping me back from being saved. Wow. I'm just going to come. And so mm -hmm. Jesus was really telling them about riches and the things that we try and carry in this life. Whether it's a, a job, a reputation, your looks or whatever, whatever you treasure, guess what? Let time take its toll. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Everything in life changes. Yep. Everything in life. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we're not like this. We're not trying to carry things that don't belong in our lives past the point where God says, let it go. Why? Because it's a hindrance. Some mm -hmm. things will keep us out. Okay, mm -hmm. so... We want to go a little bit further, talk about true riches. All right. We're going to look at 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter. And this was part of our reading for this week. And it starts off here with just this top line, Sister Carenza. Could you read this? And it's found in 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verses 11 and 12 for the glory of God. Just but, that first line. But thou, O man of God. Yes. Flee these things. Flee these things. See, he had already talked about false riches, right? Last week we covered the prior verses where we talked about false riches. But he's saying now you are a man or a woman of God. And your job is to flee those things that would hinder you. Get away from those things that would keep you or bog you down or choke, choke the word out of it. Flee. Run from it. And when you flee, you're doing what? You're escaping the danger of false riches by understanding that godliness with contentment is great gain. Yep. And the scripture, the scripture, let's go here, Matthew 25 and 21, Sister Carenza. Okay. The scripture brings out that godliness brings joy. Godliness brings joy. How does that, how does that bring that out, Sister? His Lord said unto him, Yes. Well done. Yes. Thou good and faithful servant. Oh, wait a minute. God is giving compliment out, validation, all right, encouragement to his servant. For what? What does that say? Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Oh, you had a little. You did well with the little that you had, whether it's a little money. You gave your tithes. You supported missionary work. You were generous. Whether it was a little, you were faithful. And what does God say next? I will make thee ruler. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Days. Promotion is coming from the Lord. That's Isn't right. that something? That's right. He said, I will make you ruler over what? Many things. Oh, now, many things. You're good with a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. It's like this. If, if I'm raising a child and I can't trust them with a dollar, I'm not giving them a $10 bill. You go. <laughs> I'm right. watching what you do with that dollar. I believe God watches us the same way. Yep. So, when you are faithful, he makes you ruler over many things. There's something else really crucial there. What does he say? Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. That's Isn't right. that something? Oh, yeah. That's true riches. God gives you a purpose in life. He gives you gifts to exercise. And then he gives you joy in the journey. You're ruler over all these spiritual things. You see, Lord, you've increased my patience. You increase my temperance. You increase my moderation. You increase my compassion. Those are true riches. Yep. Oh, let's go down to Psalms 92 and, and look at a couple of verses there, 13 and 14, for the glory of God. Because it's going to bring out these things, consistent life of good works. This is what the man of God, the woman of God, should display consistently. What does that say, sis? Those that be planted in the house of the Lord. Oh, wait a shall... minute. I like this. Right. Planted. Yes. You don't go in and out. There's no revolving door on Christ. You know, you can't go in and out of Christ, okay? But those that be planted, what does that say? In the house of the Lord. Oh, you're fixed. You're consistent. What happens? Shall flourish in the courts of oh, our God. You. You're growing. You're prospering. Don't you feel rich in your soul when you, you, you look at the, I can't have it you used to have? 
where you used to couldn't control your mouth, you used to couldn't stop cussing and lying and all of this, but now look at your life and you know it's only God. You're like, Lord, I feel so good I'm not bound anymore. And what else? Verse 14. Yes, ma'am. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Oh, and look at that. Down through time, you still bring it forth fruit. Isn't that something? Good things are coming out of your life. That's the true riches in Christ. Yep. And Elder Brown mentioned this earlier this week, and I'll say like he said, I have my notes already, even before he did it. So we just climbed up the same ladder, talking about the benefit package of salvation. And there's multiple scriptures here. We'll just take a look at Psalms 34 for the glory of God, read a couple of verses there. But on your own time, when you get a chance, go back and look at Ephesians and Colossians. There's so many things that talk about the riches in Christ Jesus, the grace and the power. These are things we have to treasure for the glory of God. What does that say? Verse 15, Psalm 34 and verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Oh, this is the benefit package. I love this. Yes. yes. I travel through some sketchy neighborhoods at times, you know. Sure. And you know what? It's good to know the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. Because the wicked be out there in full force on Friday night. Verse 15. Did we finish that? And his ears are open unto their cry. You driving it and you driving, you see an accident and you like, Lord, show mercy. That's Lord, right. show mercy. He's what you say, show mercy. Oh, showing mercy. He dispatches mercy. Yep. I feel rich because I have access yep. to an all-powerful, omnipresent God. All right, verse 17. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance. Is that 17? Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 17. Yes. Excuse me, that was 16. Okay. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth. Isn't that something? When we cry out, God's like, what? Wait a yeah. minute. I hear my child. All right, all right. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. The righteous cry and, and the, the Lord, Lord heareth. heareth. Yes. And delivereth them Isn't out that of all their troubles. He delivers us out of all our what? Troubles. All our troubles. Thank God for that. Yeah. How about verse 19? Many are the afflictions of oh the righteous. Oh my God. You ever be in manifold temptation? Oh yeah. This, then that, then this, no matter how plentiful they are. Verse 19 is the answer. What does that say again? Many are the afflictions They're of many. the righteous, mm -hmm. but the Lord delivereth them. Yeah. Oh, oh, but Lord, the Lord. This is part of our benefit package. Yes. Thank God. No matter what come against me, God delivers me. Verse 22. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servant. Isn't that something? And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Isn't that, that's a wonderful sure. benefit package. He's like, you trust in me, you're never going to be desolate. You're sure. never going to be barren. You're never going to be helpless and hopeless. Even when you can't do anything, you can pray. Rise into Corinthians. Amen. <laughs> and there's power in prayer. Yeah. If you didn't get it Friday night, you missed a blessing. Go back and find it on YouTube, Periscope. Very mm -hmm. encouraging, the power of prayer. And if you go and you look at these scriptures, as I mentioned earlier, it talks about the riches in Christ Jesus. We're not going to go there now for time's sake, for the glory of God. But I wanted you to be able to see these scriptures, and you can take the time to study it out on your own. All right, a little bit further. Now, the second line. He said, follow after these things. But thou, O man of God, do yes. these things, and yes. follow after righteousness. Righteousness. Godliness. Yes. Faith. All right, now I got a, a little disclaimer. When you follow righteousness, godliness, and faith, you will suffer. Okay. <laughs> okay? Sure. That's all right. Guess what? When I was in sin, I was suffering, but I, there was no benefit no to my suffering. Right. That's right. Amen. But now I'm suffering like Christ. Yeah. I'm suffering so I can hold up the light. People can see that there's a way to be delivered from sin itself. All right? Because sin itself is what got me in trouble in the first place. You too. Yep. <laughs> all right? And it says here in 2 Timothy 3 and 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer oh, persecution. Yeah. All right? But I'm still following after righteousness. Why? Because if I got to suffer, I want to suffer with gain. Get something good out of it. It's making me rich in my soul, all right? And then, if you fall after righteousness, godly, and faith, 
You're going to lose some things, but you're going to gain much more. Let's go to Mark, the 10th chapter, and see what that says for the glory of God. Sister Carenza, yes, verses 28 through 30, please. Then Peter began to say unto him, yes. No, we have left all and have followed thee. Now, I, I know, I know, I'm, I'm just going to talk to us in our humanity. Some of us have had those conversations like, Lord, you know, I, oh, yeah. you know, my family don't want me around. Yeah. You know, I'm almost glad it's a Corona uh, Thanksgiving because I don't have to face their rejection. Sometimes yeah, it's right. just like that, you oh, know. Yeah. Lord, we left everything to follow you. Yep. Peter was just being real with the Lord. There's some people that didn't like his choice to live for God. Some people want you to stay in sin because misery loves company. Yes. All right. And what else? And Jesus answered and said. Listen to that. Even in his, his humanity where he was just feeling low, in his feelings as people say, look at that. Jesus is still encouraging him. Jesus said to him, what? Verily I say unto you, yes. there is no man that hath left house, yes. or brethren, or sisters, Amen. or father, or mother, or wife, it, or this children. This ain't just you, Peter. You know, all of these people that have left this to follow me, not one of them is going to go without being rewarded. Yes. How did yeah. that finish? Or lands, yes. for my sake, and the gospels. Right. But he shall receive a hundredfold. Now in this time, houses and brothers yes. and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. Yeah, with persecution. With and persecution. in the world to come, yes. eternal life. Isn't that something? But you know, you have to stop looking to the world for your validation. When you look at Christ and the body of Christ for elevation, you'll see how rich you really are. So as you follow after righteousness, godliness, and faith, these things are going to come against you. Persecution and all of that. Some losses of some things which you are going to gain. Amen. Because Christ, he came that we might have a more abundant life. Alright, some more things. We, we did all of this, but now we have to talk about what? Love. Love. Patience. Yes. Meekness. Yes. Fight the good fight. Now, you know, I find that when you talk about love, people love to talk about how everybody else should love them. You know what I mean? <laughs> everybody else notice that? People love to talk about how you should love me. You know, well, you know, I like this and I like that. I don't like it when people do this. I don't like it when people do that. Right. But they don't like to talk about how they owe other people the kind of love that God requires out of them. Sure. You know, that that's the tight but it's right part, okay? And you find it in different relationships, you know, husband and wives and friendships and family relationships. And I'll just say this. True love is not loving somebody in the way that's comfortable for you. Good. True love is sacrificing yep. to yep. love them the way one God says and that they articulate they need. What am I talking about? You know, there are some people that love hugs and kisses and all of that little romantic stuff. And, you know, they don't want to marry somebody who's the rock of Gibraltar. No, I think that's hard. I don't want to hold your hand, sis. Right, you know, right. no, no, they need a little tactile con contact right. to feel the love you have in there, in your heart. This is how you get the love to them. And you're standing there like, no, I'd rather pray. Yeah, look, she don't want you praying all the time. You know, but the sacrifice is loving somebody the way they need to be loved. Right. You know, and you may want to hang all over your husband and talk him all night long and be like, oh, you know what I was all these good. And, you know, he's nodding off. You know what love will have you do? Let him go to sleep. Right. You know, just let him go to sleep. You know, his eyes rolling back in his head. He's like, oh, show mercy. You know, but you want to say something else. Get a girlfriend for that. Talk, you know, talk yourself out. Love them the way they need to be loved to feel loved. Wow. Sidebar. But it's true anyhow. Yeah. True and follow after those things. When you follow after love and patience and meekness, you can endure with grace. First Corinthians 13. Let's look at verses 4 through 7. 
Charity suffereth long and that's something. is kind. Isn't that something? We, we, we want to say, Lord, give me more love. And I need to make you suffer so a long time. Oh, <laughs> oh Lord, you answered my prayer. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> that's true. Charity suffereth long. And what else? And is kind. And while you're suffering, you're being kind. Those people that are taking you through, these are the real riches. Yes. These are real riches. My because God. even though... Even though when you're going through the test, it hurts. But when you go through the test the right way, you can feel you grown in grace. You can feel God is pleasing. And it's almost like that. Thou has been faithful over a few things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. It's almost like God gives you extra joy for your obedience and sacrifice. Yes, yes. Okay, what else does that say? Charity envy is not. All right. Charity vaunt is not itself. Yes. It's not puffed up. It's not. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Yes. So if not her own, it's not easily provoked. Think it sure. no that's, evil. That's another one we have to exercise. You want to be more like this, flee these things? Do you know the devil wars against your mind? You're constantly bombarded with thoughts about other people, about the things they said, about their intentions. You know what? You have to fight the good fight of yeah, faith. Yeah. You have to endure hardness as a good soldier. Do you know in order for you to get strengthened in an area, you have to do your reps? Yep. Pastor preached about working out your own salvation. You can't lift a 10 pound weight one time and think you build muscle. Right. No sir, no ma'am. You have to do those reps. You gotta get in there. You know, you know you have a good workout when you, uh, uh, your your cardio is going, you yep. sweating and everything, and you like, oh my goodness, your arms feel a little jelly-like and like, oh, I got a good workout today. Yep. God takes us spiritually through good workouts. Dealing sometimes with difficult people so that we can come back strengthened with might in the inner man. Very good. Uh, we're going to go ahead from there. You can look uh, look back at that. A lot of us are very familiar with that. But part of this true riches is enduring hardness. Enduring hardness. Why do I say that? Because when you have something of value, for you to keep it safe, it takes great effort. Mm -hmm. And we have salvation. It takes great effort for us to maintain our relationship with God and to increase it so that we grow in grace. So that we go from glory to glory to glory. And you have to fight the good fight. Keeping these things, you will see that the treasures of life, the, ple the pleasures of the world, they just fade and fade in value. The more you get a good glimpse of Christ, so the more you appreciate the true riches yep. and glory for the glory of God. Amen. All right, a little bit further. I got some things I want to get to. So now, after you fight the good fight of faith, what do you do, sis? Lay hold on you, eternal life. You hold it and don't let it go. Friends can come and go. Jobs can come and go. Right. Homes can come and go. Your hair can come and go, but don't let go of eternal life. There are a lot of things that's going to change, but lay hold and hold on. Don't let go of eternal life. What else? Whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession yes. before many witnesses. All right. Very good. So we finished that. I got a question. We talked about the true riches. And I have a question. Pastor Gordon used to say this to us often. Absolutely. If the whole church were like me, what kind of church would it be? Wow. Periscope, this is not for you to answer on the line. I want you to think about it. All those things we talked about, about what you value or what you appreciate. If the whole church were like you, this whole congregation, Expanded out with the whole world were exact replica, replicas of who you are today. What kind of church would it be? Wow, good question. What kind of church would it be? Would the church have more love because it was like you or less? More peace or less? Mm. More joy or less? Wow. Pastor Golden preached a message. Would it be supporting life or on life support? Wow. These are searching questions. When you think about it, it, it should inspire you 
to change those things that should be changed and to continue to working in the areas where you see progress, but maybe you're not where you think you should be yet for the glory of God. Keep working on those things, but change those other things that you know they need to go. Mm -hmm. All right, a little bit farther. So a good example of those that really appreciated the true riches in life is going to be found in 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. And I got this little star over here because it's like their little report card. They got an A+. Plus. This church got an A+. Plus. And it's not really just one church. It's a group of churches. And the scripture talks about the churches of Macedonia. And it shows you here some of the names of some of the locations in there. And I bring that out because sometimes when you see how... It happened in the real world, in the natural world, you can gain a greater appreciation. So these saints here, we're going to read uh, 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, we're going to read 1 through 5. But I want to give you this backdrop. These saints here, they were all the way over there in Macedonia, okay? Another part of the world. But they had heard from Paul yep. that the saints here in Jerusalem were suffering yep. and were struggling. And some of the things that I think are very profound, you have to consider the saints here were Jews, yep. a whole different culture. You know, the Jews really weren't friendly to the Gentiles. Right. And the Gentiles knew it. But then way over here, these were Gentiles. Yep. And we're gonna see how people who way over here heard about a situation of people, saints way over there, and how their heart responded. That shows that they actually had true riches in all these little churches that were part of the churches of Macedonia. Sure. So let's go there. Second Corinthians, the eighth chapter, and start with verse one. Moreover, brethren, yes, we do, we do you to wit mm -hmm. of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So you know what he's saying. He's like, man, I want to tell you, I want you to know that they have a grace or a gift here, these, these, this little bitty place way on the other side of their world, so to speak. They have a gift. Their gift was what he called the grace of God. Yep. You know, it was so, it's a gift in the sense it enabled them to do something you wouldn't expect them to be able to do considering their circumstances. And the grace of God gave them an ability to see a need all the way on the other side and a desire to meet that need. This group of little, little bitty churches way on the other side. They have probably never seen anybody that just heard or Paul's testimony. And look at God's story of their heart. Verse 10, please. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy now look at this poverty they first they had a great trial of affliction yep affliction could be natural affliction it could be persecution from without it could be all kind of outward exigent circumstances that caused them to be in dire hardships so they had a great trial of affliction and then what else the abundance of their joy. Wait a minute, that is saying something that doesn't even seem to make sense. <laughs> How do you have a great trial of affliction? I rarely hear people testify. It's like talking about a great trial of affliction and an abundance of joy. Yep. Lord, help me to get there. Yep. <laughs> because they had a great trial of affliction, but they had an abundance of joy. And what else? And their deep poverty. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. That is that deep poverty. Deep, deep. What is deep poverty? I, I, when they use the word deep, they're saying it's not the surface. That's right. You know, it's further than the surface. Yeah. And so, in my mind, if you'll go there with me, in my mind, I saw little house churches, people going from one house to another house, and they're worshiping, and maybe they see a brother, and he's, he's kind of, his clothes are kind of old, and, and, and Miss Shovel, maybe he's not as clean as, you know, some of the other ones, but he's in, in worship and reading and rejoicing and thanking, and then they leave to go to their separate homes, but this brother might be homeless. Yep. But while he was at church, he's sitting there rejoicing oh, and taking Lord. in the word and everybody hugging the saints. He's not complaining. He's not looking for handouts. He's just rejoicing in the Lord. Sure. And they're like, okay, all right, God bless you. God bless you. 
And then he goes to find a place to sleep, a way to keep warm. Wow. Boy, I'm telling you, a deep poverty. But look at how God works all of this together. The great trial of affliction, abundance of joy, deep poverty, it created a richness in giving. Only God can do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When we have a great affliction and deep poverty, our natural fleshly minds is not thinking about giving. Yeah. But there's a grace, a gift from God that will get us there if we allow God to reshape us. Yep. What does that say? Um, abounding unto the riches of their liberality. And all of this created, it didn't hinder, but it abounded. Yep. What else? Verse 3. For to their power I bear record. Isn't that something? Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Oh, yeah. Praying us with much entreaty yes. that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry to the saints. Now, isn't that something? It says, not only did they give a gift, but they gave beyond their power. Sure. He's looking at them, right. knowing their deep poverty, yeah. and they gave so much. He was like, you can't afford it. This is Paul. Look yeah. at us. You can't even afford this. And they turned around and begged him, please, Paul. Wow. Please, Paul, yeah. take it. Yeah. You, you yeah. can't afford it. Please, take it. You know what their deep poverty had taught them? It taught them, if i got enough for today, I'm blessed. Amen. But my brother doesn't have enough for today. Yeah. i got to make sure my God has already been taking care of me. So yeah. guess what? I'm going to take care of my brother. Because yeah. his faithfulness over and over again has me convinced I can give this away and still get fed. Isn't that something? This is that kind of church we want to be like. And in verse 4, I, I believe Sister Carenza read it. I have here an NIV version. I use them sparingly because their doctrine is not sound. But sometimes they order the words in a way that's a little bit clearer to understand. In the NIV version, it says they urgently pleaded with Paul and the people on their missionary journey for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. Yeah. Isn't that something? Oh God. Begging, yeah. broke, deep poverty, great affliction. And they said, please, I want to be a blessing to people I don't know. They're not like me. I may never meet them, but I want to be a blessing to those yeah. saints. Isn't that something? How do we do in verse 5? What does that say? And this they did. Yes. Not as we hoped, All but right. first gave their own selves to Isn't the Lord. Isn't that something? First gave their own selves to the Lord. And unto us, by yes. the will of God. To the Lord. Then they get what? They followed the example of their leaders, of the Paul, their ministry. And that, all of this equal them being rich in good works. Yeah. I want to be rich in good works. Amen. But it requires me stretching myself beyond what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. You know, I want to be like the churches of Macedonia. How about you? Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, look at here, look at here. Got a question. Based on Matthew 6 and 19, Periscope, get ready because you got a question coming up. Uh, Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Can you read that, uh, yes. Sister Corinth, please? Yes, ma'am. Lay not up for yourselves yes. treasures upon the earth. The do's and the don'ts. This is a don't, yes. Where moth and rust doth corrupt. You know, there are all kinds of things that happen in, in, in this life, all right? And where thieves break through and steal. All right. But lay up for yourselves treasures oh, in heaven. Oh, this is a do. Lay up treasures in heaven. Where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Nothing can diminish your heavenly treasures. Yes. Um, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Yes. For where your treasure is, there will your heart right be there. also. All right. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So Periscope, my question for you is how do you store up treasures in heaven? How do you store up treasures in heaven? Right. How do you do that? Mm, it's nice that the scripture says that. So how do we apply that in our daily life? Every day, how do we store up treasures in heaven? So while you all are thinking about that and adding that in Periscope, let's look at a couple of 
scripture. One, Matthew 13, 52. Sister Carenza, if you will be so yes, kind. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed of yes. the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out his treasure yes. things new yep. and old. Yep. So, the first thing, I see some good answers coming in. Let me do this. Brother Naheem, prayer. Sister Darlene, seeking first the kingdom of God. Yes, suffering. Very good, Brother Judge. Setting your affections on things above. Somebody got it, Brother Fidel. Yes, they gave themselves to the Lord first. Sister Gail, staying focused on God and know that God is who he says he is. Very good, Sister uh, Yvette. Give yourself to the Lord daily in prayer. Sister Vicki, stay before God. Sister Shekhan, having faith. Excellent, excellent answer. Let's look at this scripture. Because this scripture, I love it. Uh, I'm sorry, Sister Carenza. Read it again. So. Matthew 13, yes, 13 52. 52, please. Sure. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Every scribe. Everybody. All of us are scribes. All of us should be in the word, yep. okay? This is what this scripture is talking about. The scribe, their duty was to know the word, okay? Right. Every scribe that's instructed, yes. Unto the kingdom of heaven is yes. like unto a man that is a householder, yes. which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new now, and old. The treasure is the word. Right. For us to store up treasures in heart, we got to treasure the word in our heart. And not only that, out of the old and the new, they bring out treasure. When you study the word of God, you should be able to go into the Old Testament and the New Testament, connect them together to get a better understanding of the word and will of God. You should be in the word. When you study the word, when you treasure the word, when God speaks to you through the word, you're going to feel so rich and increased with goods in your soul. You get strengthened with might in the inner man. Because those are some of the true riches, okay? Let's go to Mark 10, 21 for the glory of God. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Oh, this is the fellow him. that came and, you know, I got it all so, sewn up. I got it. He kind of, you know, remind me, you got a lot of money, money, money going on. Look at this little baby. Look at this baby. She's so caught up in money. She's just throwing the money around. You know, like... If you can see it closer, she got a bunch of dollar bills. You know. <laughs> but children are like that. You know. And I wonder when God look at us worrying over piddly little things in comparison to eternity, if we look like this. Oh, my 401k. Oh, look at my new car. I don't want to look like that. Amen. Those aren't the true riches. Amen. All right. I'm sorry. Martin 10, 21. Yes, ma'am. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. And yes. said unto him, yes. What thing thou lackest? You lack it. Go thy way. Yes. Sell whatsoever thou hast. Yes. And give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. He, and come, take up the cross and follow me. He told him to sell what he had. And what he was saying is, You you love that so much. You can never serve me. Why? Because of your love for your wealth. Some of us are rich in our own way, as we've been told time and time again. Some people like ticking off the little boxes. I tithe. I pray. Yep. I go to church when I'm supposed to. I log in on time. <laughs> you know, I wait for the last word. You, checking the boxes is not salvation. It's allowing God to move in your life to control you and to use you as he sees. Right. Where you bring forth glory to him. It's not checking the boxes. Right. True riches. When you, when God talks to you about, I'm one of these people that's very task orientated. You give me something to do, mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning, bing, okay. You know, and, and it's like, bam, bam, hit it, hit it, hit it, you mm -hmm. know. And God tells me, but the tasks are for my people. Mm -hmm. So you have to. Be more focused on my people than the task itself. And so now I have to create a task. 
Remember the people. Remember the people, right? You know, because that's how my brain works. That's how my, my desire works. And so God will teach all of us how to be more effective for the kingdom. And when he shows us what we have to correct and we accept it, that's us selling our way. And that's us selling our way. Maybe you feel more uncomfortable in, in the scriptures, in the books, and whatever. But what's the use of you storing up all that knowledge and understanding, but you never give it to anybody? That's right. It doesn't profit anybody. You have to interact with everybody. And not just pointing your finger and telling them what they should do. But sometimes you got to take people who are in hard situations and walk them out. That's right. Step by step. Yeah, they may not be right. ready yet. They may, they may be, you know, still struggling. That's and you right. have to have the compassion that God had toward us yeah. to sit there and walk them step by That's step. That's right. Yes. Step by Because, you know, God walked us out of our madness yes. step yes. by step. And even in salvation, he's still walking with us step by step. Amen. Step by step. Amen. All right. All right. Did we finish that? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. One more. Luke 12, verse 33 and 34. Luke, these are the true riches. And as she's getting that, I mentioned to the ministers earlier, I said, um, last week when we studied the young man who came to Jesus and said, Master, I want you to make my brother give me my inheritance. And I had mentioned that earlier to them. And I said it, I say it again because sometimes Jesus responded to him, who made me a judge and rule over you? Why are you asking me about these things? And I look at that situation and it, it's profound to me because we have access to such great power. Why would we sit there squabbling amongst one another? Lord, you see, they didn't pick me. They didn't call my name. Yeah. Nobody called me. Nobody recognized me. Why are we squabbling before Christ when Christ is able to change all the major things in life? And we're sitting here talking about something little. The little things. We need a big picture. So, because I don't want to be like that fella and have an audience with God and waste it on something small. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I look at that. You, he, he, I'm king of kings and lord of lords. You talk about an inheritance that will end with time. Mm -hmm. There are things our eternal soul is going to surpass time and live all throughout eternity. If I get an audience with God, I want to get some true riches. Right. That's how I store it up. Right. Every time I have a true audience with God, I take in what he's telling me and I live it out in my life. Mm -hmm. All right, what does that say in Luke? Sell that you have and give all. Sell that you have. Yep. Be Sell faithful, that. support God's work, yep. give all. You know, giving alms is not paying tithes. Right. Give up. Did you hear that? Giving alms is not paying tithes. Don't be like, I paid my time. You ain't getting another dime. Oh, watch out. <laughs> Giving on, that's charity. That's something different than paying time. Don't think you got it all buttoned down just because you pay time. God will tell you to give a little extra. Well, that's the devil. Watch out. <laughs> Where your treasure is, yeah. there will your heart be also. What else does it say? Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. Yeah, and the bags where they kept the money. Yeah. Don't don't be so limited by time. So good things for eternity. What else? And treasure in the heavens yes. that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, no one can corrupteth. Yeah. For where your treasure is, yes. there will your heart be also. Yep. Amen. Yep. Amen. Very good. I like this one. This is one of my favorite ones. Can you read Matthew 12, 35, 4, percent A good man, out yes. of the good treasure of his heart, yes. brings forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil oh, man, yeah. out of the evil Seven. treasure, Seven. brings forth evil things. Matthew 12, 35. So what, what's a good treasure? What's a good treasure that you have in your heart? When you love God, first of all, you appreciate, you treasure the love of family and friendship and the good things God has put in your life. When you have that in your heart, guess what? It's going to come out of you and you're going to bring forth good things. But I found this. There are people who treasure every wrong, every offense, every slight endured, from childhood to the present day, yeah. they they carry it with them like a badge of honor. They meditate on it. 
it, it impacts them today. But somebody said 30 years ago, wow. when they always told me I was ugly, and you ain't heard nothing different since then, they treasure it. And as a result of them treasuring those negative things, those evil things in their heart, out of their lives come forth evil things. What? They speak negatively. Yep. They can't trust anybody. Yep. They always look it around like, I don't know what you up to. I don't trust yep. you. You remind me of uh, my great aunt. She was abusive because you talk like her. Evil comes yeah, yeah. out of yeah. them. And God wants to be able to deliver us from these things. But we got to stop treasuring the evil that happens in life. Yep. It happened to you. You can't yep. treasure it. You can't. You have to treasure the good that God gives you in your life. Mm -hmm. It will change your perspective. I guarantee you it will change your perspective. So a bad example. This congregation, this church, look at them in Fort Cobb. Not flying high. They were failing. Failing. You got a bunch of F's. The F's are in red. This is the church of Laodicea. And one of our daily readings was about the church of Laodicea. And I want to tell you some things so that we can put more context to why Jesus rebuked them so severely for their life. One of the things, this is like a little uh, drawing or scale of what the city looked, back, looked like in uh, biblical times. But I want to tell you some of the things that the Laodicean people, the people had in their city at their disposal. They had a stadium. A gymnasium. They had an aqueduct system, this little blue lock. That's right. The aqueduct was so that because of where they were situated geographically, they could get water from uh, Hierapolis. It was a city called Hierapolis when they got had hot springs. They could get water from the hot springs and then they had Colossus, which was under them. And they could get the cool, refreshing water. They had access to all of these ways of being nourished and yep. increased, okay? They had, um, some, I don't even know what that is, a large theater, a small theater, they had a temple, they had a bridge, a, a clearing basin, a water tower. They, they were a very sophisticated city. Yep. They were a wealthy city as a whole, okay? This is significant. But the problem was, because of their own particular location, or we'll say spiritually, their own particular condition, yeah. all the things they had access to didn't profit them at all. This is very profound. Their water supply system was furnished by underground aqueducts from hot springs. So you would think those hot springs would bring them hot water, right? No, no sir, no ma'am, it didn't. But because of where they were located at, once the water's left hot, by the time it got to them, it was lukewarm. Yeah. They had access to Colossus where the water was cool and refreshing. And they had a system developed to bring the cool water from Colossus to them. But because of where they were, guess what? By the time the water got to them, it was warm. And it had a bad taste. And there were impurities in the water. So much so it made people sick. Yeah. All right? What is that trying to say? All of these people, let me, let me show you something else about them. Remember how Jesus rebuked them for their wealth? Well, this, this city was extremely wealthy. That's right. But he said to them, to the church, you are, you look rich. You look increased with goods. He said, but you're not. Yeah. If he told them here, he rebuked their sense of prosperity just because you have things that make you look wealthy. He told them to get ice out. Did you know historically they had a medical school? Man. A medical school in Laodicea? And you know what they had? They had created an ice out to wow. physically heal eye infections. And he, he criticized them, said, you need ISA. Yeah. You toot to the world about how you all, your medical school has created this ISA, but you're blind. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah. They were known as a fashion industry. Yeah. They were well known to 
produce a certain black wool and the people walk around the city with their black wool. Wow. Fine clothes. He said, but you're naked. Isn't yeah. that something? Amen. There are outward things you can have that if you don't have the right stuff inwardly, it means nothing. And that was the situation with the Laodiceans. And so God gave them a, um, and I'll talk about that water right briefly. The word of God represents, it's represented by the water. You know how it says by the washing of the water by the word? Isn't that something? Ye, you know, it says, now ye are clean, you know, through the words which I've speak, spoken unto you. I'm paraphrasing. So what that Hierapolis and that uh, Colossus is representing is no matter how the word is preached, whether the word comes hot and heavy, it has no effect on you. Yeah. Whether the word is cold and chilling, yeah. you're still in the same condition. Yeah. And that's what they were criticizing the Laodiceans for because all of this outward stuff had robbed them from the things that mattered on the inside. Amen. But God had counsel for them because God doesn't want any to perish. He says here, Revelation 3.18, can you read that for me, please, sis? Yes, ma'am. I counsel thee to yes. buy of me gold, try me yes. with fire. I'm giving you the solution. Yep. Purchase of me gold, try me with fire, what? That thou mayest be rich. Yes. In white raiment. Oh, you got your own raiment, but I got some for you, but you got to buy it. You got to give up something to get it. That thou mayest be clothed. Yes. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Yes. And anoint thine eyes with thyself, yes. that thou mayest see. Anoint your eyes. Isn't that something? All these things you think you have. God said you're blind. Your eyes don't work. You're naked. You're not wealthy. You're poor. Only way for you to do it is buy gold tried in the fire. A little bit about the gold. Where is gold found? Periscope, I'm rushing. Where is gold found? Isn't it found in the earth? In the earth. In the earth. Yes, it is. All of us have something of value and, and great worth to God. But it's inside of this earthen vessel. Right. And in order for you to get the natural gold, you have to extract it from the earth. Guess what? Spiritually speaking, to get the good out of us, God has to extract it out of us. And in order for you to get it, you got to mine it. you got to break up the earth to pull out the gold. Guess what? Your desire... Your desire for God is what you have to have in order for God to be able to get into, to be able to work on you to get those valuable gifts that you have for the kingdom sake out of you. You have to have that desire within right. you. Second right. Timothy 1 and 6, it talks about stirring up the gift that is within you. Yeah. And then once you get the gold out of the ground, guess what? It's ground to powder. Ground to powder, right? Because you got to get all the impurities, or at least a measure of the impurities out, because it's a process. When you hear, when you set your affections on things above, guess what? God is grinding out the things that don't matter. He's separating the things that are a hindrance and a weight, things that will keep you from being completely 100% sold out. A lot of people, they get saved, and then they want to get saved but look like the world. Yes, say, I'm going to have the favor of God, but I want to have my way in how I look and how I talk and how I treat people. Lord, help. Uh -uh, God has to grab all of that out, okay? Yeah. God then separated that, the gold from the earthly elements called dross. Yeah. When you hear the preaching about modesty and godliness, and it burns you up, guess what? God's trying to get the dross out of you. Talk about how you style your hair and how you're trying to look just like the world. I don't want to look just like the world. I want to look like an ambassador for Christ for the glory of God. Vain desires have to go. Galatians 5.26 brings that out. The gold is smelted in a fiery furnace. Yep. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. No, it don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to try and sell that. No, it doesn't feel good, right. but it works for the good. Yeah, and he right. assures us, think it not strange about these okay. fiery trials, which is to try you. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get this stuff out of you. Don't think it's strange. The devil ain't unhindered. Anything I allow the devil to do, it's going to work for you good. It will make you, not break you. Then gold is refined. See, we think you get the gold here, and then it's all of a sudden refined. Oh no, there's all these different steps. And you come, you're like, oh my God, why am I still in the test? You're still being perfected. Right. Gold is refined. And the scripture tells 
help us, the fire shall try every man's work. So now you feel yourself in the fire. Guess what? Thank God. He's answering your prayer. Go through the fire. Come back on the other side. A better person for the glory of God. So I hope you're still with me, Periscope viewers, because I got one more thing for you for the glory of God. We talked about true riches. Now we're going to search for some of the true riches. Amen. I got a word search, all right? <laughs> it's a word search. And those of you that have the ability to see the letters, let me see if you can find some of the true riches that are hidden here. Yeah. There are true riches hidden in life. But you have to seek it out. So let's see. All right, very good, very good. So I'm going to give you a hint. I know there's one here. Oh, Christy. I'm not bragging because she's my daughter. But, uh, <laughs> you know, she found one of the, one of the hidden rule words. She found it. It's right here. Very good. Thank the Lord. Oh, I see. I see. They're coming in. Faith, grace. Yes, zeal. Zeal is right in there. It's very hard to read backwards, but I got it in the next slide. Yes, see, grace, peace. Oh, Sister Cherise, you got three of them all in one time. Yes, love. All right. These are some of the true riches, aren't they? Amen. All right, and there's more. Look at this. There's the church having a body of believers, being able to all live together and strive for the true riches in life. It's nice to be able to know you're not alone in your fight. As you lay hold on eternal life, you see your comrades in the faith. Isn't that something? That's a blessing. Anybody find yep, Sister Tiara, she got fellowship. Very good. How about grace? We found grace. Uh, anybody find the saints? Anybody find the saints yet? The saints, I think, are kind of sideways. Uh, yep, there they go. The saints go marching in. Yeah, I love the saints. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're a peculiar people, so I fit right in, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. the Lord. 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 All right. <laughs> Titus is in there. Trials are in there. Trials come, but guess what? They come to pass. Be encouraged, saints. Anything else? I think we got most of them. There was the gift. Look for your gift. Look for a gift of giving. Ask God to give you the grace of God to be able to give for the glory of God. Faith. The church is a gift. Trial right there. Zeal. This is poverty. We don't look for poverty, but I don't want to be rich in my way. Right. I want, I want to be broke in my Amen. way, if, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. There is, this is fellowship, very good, and what is that? Riches. Isn't that something? We finally found the true riches. All mm -hmm. right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We realize we're almost at the end of the quarter, so you will be receiving instructions regarding the next set of Sunday School books shortly. So keep in touch and join us again at 11 o'clock today for the 11 a.m. service and stay in touch. We will give you news on our next in-person worship. So keep your ears open and more information is to come. Thank you and God bless you.